you know, there's a, there's a lot of people now in the United States who say that uh, the reason they attacked us on September 11, 2001, is because they wanted to draw us into Afghanistan. They wanted to trap us in a quagmire over there and weigh us down like the uh, uh, like the Soviet Union. And that ISIS is trying to do the same thing now in Iraq and Syria. But when you talk to KSM about what he expected us to do after 9/11, it was a very different story. What did what did he tell you? What he expected us the response to 9/11 to be? Okay, um, he he. he uh said that uh, when the planes hit the tower that they didn't expect the World Trade Center to collapse. I mean, they did expect that the airplane would hit the Pentagon, that the airplane would hit the Capitol, which it didn't do because of the brave men and women on Flight 90, United Flight 93. And uh, he, they thought that they would, a couple of floors would be damaged and some, you know, a lot of people would be killed, but that the towers wouldn't collapse. And then when the towers collapsed, he said he thought it was a sign from Allah that their cause was just and that Allah was behind them and that this was a, a beacon that would draw like-minded jihadists to rise up around the world and pursue their goal, their Islamist goal of, of uh, uh, imposing Sharia law on the whole world and it would start with the United States. He said, but then all of a sudden we're lucky to survive the night. He said that the uh, swiftness and the ferocity of President Bush's response kept them off balance. You know, they were just running and hiding and, you know, try, trying not to end up dead. The second in command, Abu Hafsa Masri, was killed in a, in a missile attack. And uh, uh, they were just on the run, just trying to not get killed. They quit using electronics. They couldn't talk to each other. They couldn't reach out. What most people probably don't know is that there was a group called uh, that was run by a man named Hambali who had done the uh, what we call the Bali bombing, uh, and he had a, a young group of folks just like the pilots in 9/11, who he had I think he was going to Australia and they were going to train to fly planes into buildings, or just enough to be able to fly. This is the Garaba cell. Yes. Yes. And um, what uh, happened was. The ferocity of George Bush's response kept them off so much off balance that they weren't able to pursue that plot. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it delayed it and, dis, and uh, disrupted it in such a way that they had difficulty getting it off. And then because of the EITs, we were able to capture different Al Qaeda operatives. And so, and so their leadership started falling like dominoes and then the plot was completely disrupted. And he said, he told you that he expected us to respond like uh, the Reagan administration had to the Beirut bombing. Right. What he said was, we thought that you were going to respond like it was a law enforcement thing. We didn't expect that World Trade Center to collapse. And we thought you were going to respond like a law enforcement. We thought that what would happen is uh, you would turn it over to the FBI. They would do this year-long, month, two-year-long investigation. They would maybe be able to find out an individual's name because they didn't expect that the whole group would be held accountable. They thought we were gonna do like we do with criminals. We were gonna to try to find the individual people who had done it, mm -hmm. and most of them were dead, and that just left him and Ramsey Beneshiba and you know, some of his cohorts like uh, Amara Baluchi, and so we thought we would try to hunt those particular people down, and they had worked out a deal with the Taliban where they had killed the leader of the Northern Alliance with the assurances that if they helped them kill the leader of the Northern Alliance, the Taliban would resist having uh, turning them over to the U.S. when they eventually found out who did it. But, but what happened was, well, in fact, he explained that to me, and then he looks down and he looks up and goes, how was I supposed to know that cowboy George Bush would tell the world he wanted us dead or alive and then invade Afghanistan to get us? And like, like Bush wasn't playing fair, you know, <laughs> like, like he had somehow broke the rules. And... Uh, he was just stunned by the ferocity of it. So the lesson, I mean, so the lesson going forward as we're dealing with ISIS and we're dealing still with Al-Qaeda because there's Al-Qaeda in Syria and they've, they've got cells all over the world, is they're not trying to draw us in. They well, don't they want mean, us to come in and go after them. They want, they, they, their goal is to make us retreat and withdraw, isn't it? I, well, what they believe they can do is enough damage that the Americans will grow tired of it. Mm -hmm. uh, KSM said that the real battlefield is not out there, it's inside the mind of Americans mm -hmm. because they know that the American people can shut down any effort that the government has if they, 
And so what he thinks will happen is the American people will grow tired of it. And the American people just won't want it to continue, that, they'll, that the, that the uh, attacks and the deaths and all that stuff will, will just make us want to stop. And that we will accept the imposition of Sharia law um, just to make it go away. So uh, in terms of, of drawing us in, he, his plan wasn't to draw us in. He didn't want that to happen. His plan was to launch another attack in the United States. He already had people on the ground over here. He already had a uh, series of what I would call harassing attacks, mm -hmm. you know, which was basically once you got the FBI involved in his mind, uh, they have a limited amount of resources and a limited amount of people. And if he could do a series of smaller, horrific attacks inside the United States, that would help deplete the resources and give them some more time to get this other attack off the ground. So the idea was he was expecting law enforcement response just like they had after the coal bombing, just like we had after yeah, the- Yeah, he said, he said, what he said was, I expected the, the, the president to do what all the other presidents had done. In 1983, after they killed 200 plus uh, Marines in Lebanon, uh, Reagan turned tail and run. Uh, we bombed two embassies in 1998. Clinton did nothing but fire a couple of missiles at a at a, uh, a, a an abandoned training camp. Uh, and when we did the coal in uh, uh, 2000 in in Yemen, there was really no response. And so he thought, based on what he had experienced, he thought that President Bush was going to respond the same way. And President Bush didn't. And what I would say to people who are listening to me talk is, think about the way we've handled this for the last eight years and ask yourself, what are they thinking now? 